Welcome. My name is Kathleen Sluka. I'm a professor at the University of Iowa in the Department of Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation Science. Along with my colleague, Dr. Leslie Crawford at Vanderbilt University, I am a co-investigator on a very exciting study called FM-TIPS, or Fibromyalgia TENS in Physical Therapy Study. With this brief video, I would like to introduce you to the intervention of our study, TENS, or Transcutaneous Electrical Nerve Stimulation. The goals for this presentation are to understand how TENS produces analgesia, understand the data supporting TENS use for people with fibromyalgia, and provide general recommendations for use of TENS for pain control. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, or TENS, is the application of electrical current to the skin for pain control. A small battery-powered device is used to provide the electrical current through the electrodes placed on the skin. The stimuli can be given at different frequencies and intensities. Two common frequencies are used, low frequency, which is less than 10 pulses per second, and a high frequency, which is greater than 50 pulses per second. These devices are available over the counter, are safe and easy to use. Nociceptors are sensory receptors in your tissue that respond to stimuli that damage or threaten to damage the tissue. Signals from these nociceptors are transmitted through the central nervous system where they are interpreted as pain when they reach the cortex. In fibromyalgia and other chronic pain conditions, there are changes in neurons in the central nervous system that process these signals. The neurons show an increase in excitability to painful stimuli and a decrease in ability to inhibit pain. Our laboratory has spent over 20 years understanding how the TENS works and determining the best parameters for application. Early studies examined the effects of TENS on the increased central excitability in the central nervous system. Recording activity directly from neurons in the spinal cord, we showed that after an injury, there's an increased excitability. Compare the green bars to the red bars. When we then applied TENS to these uh, neurons, we then show a reduction in the activity back to pre-injury levels the blue bars here. These data show that TENS reduces central excitability. The central nervous system has the ability to reduce nociceptive signals or pain signals. These pain inhibitory pathways include an area in the midbrain called the periaqueductal gray, which sends signals to the medulla to a nuclei called the rostroventral medial medulla or the RVM and then they will send signals to the spinal cord. These pathways use our body's own opioids to inhibit pain. To test if these nuclei were involved in tense analgesia, we block neuron activity in these nuclei during both low and high frequency tens. When we block neuron activity in the periaqueductal gray or the PAG, we show no analgesia produced by tens. Normal inhibition is shown on this graph as 100%, and no inhibition of pain behaviors is shown as a zero. Under control conditions, we have nearly 100% reduction in pain behaviors, but when we block the neuron activity, that reduction does not occur. In the RVM, we blocked opioid receptors to look at their role in the analgesia produced by TENS. When we blocked mu opioid receptors, with naloxone, we show that low frequency TENS is not effective. And if we block delta opioid receptors with naltrandol, we show that high frequency TENS is not effective. The same pat pattern occurred in the spinal cord, where low frequency TENS analgesia was mediated by mu opioid receptors and high frequency TENS analgesia by delta opioid receptors. Thus, TENS can activate multiple different pathways to produce analgesia. Additional other receptors have been tested for their role in TENS analgesia and include serotonin and GABA. The intensity of stimulation of TENS, how high you turn up the unit, is critical to produce analgesia. We've shown that increasing TENS intensity shows an increasing amount of analgesia with the highest analgesia occurring with the highest 
stimulus intensities. Individuals with chronic pain often complain about pain with activity that limits their ability to participate in their daily activities or to exercise, which is an effective treatment for fibromyalgia. In a group of individuals with fibromyalgia, a simple 10 minute task can increase their pain by three points on a 10 point scale. This does not occur in individuals without pain. This means that when a pain starts at a four or a five, it could increase to as high as a seven or an eight during an activity, such as exercise. Thus, development of treatments for activity-induced pain could help people become more active with less pain. If you remember, I previously showed you that chronic pain conditions such as fibromyalgia are associated with increased excitability and reduced inhibition in the central nervous system. I also just showed you that TENS reduces central excitability and increases central inhibition. Thus, TENS may be an ideal treatment for individuals with fibromyalgia. Our research group just completed a large randomized controlled trial testing the effectiveness of TENS for individuals with fibromyalgia, the FAST study. In this study, individuals used TENS at home for one month while they were active. We used a modulated frequency with a strong tolerable intensity. We tested the effects of TENS on movement evoked pain and movement evoked fatigue. These graphs show the data for the two movement evoked pain tasks, pain during walking, pain during a, a sit to stand task, and pain at rest. Baseline levels started at around a six, and after the initial treatment of TENS, with an active treatment, we get a, a reduction in the amount of pain. After one month of treatment, we retested the effectiveness of TENS. In this case, we show a reduction of about two points in movement evoked pain and a similar reduction in resting pain. Interestingly, we also showed reductions in movement evoked fatigue and resting fatigue with repeated use of TENS over a one month period. Thus, these st studies have shown that TENS is effective for individuals with fibromyalgia on movement evoked pain and fatigue. Over the years, we have developed a series of recommendations based on our research and the, that of others for application of TENS in the clinic. We recommend using a modulated frequency between a low and a high uh, frequency of stimulation. Intensity should be as high as an individual can tolerate, yet not be painful. Duration should be a minimum of 30 minutes per session. Electrodes should be placed at the site of pain. Application, we should really apply the TENS unit while people are active or exercising. And TENS should work uh, best for individuals with central mechanisms underlying their pain. These studies serve as the basis for our new study, FM Tips. This study will examine the effects of TENS in a real world setting. We are asking if TENS given during a physical therapy sessions improves outcomes in people with fibromyalgia. We are excited about the new study and look forward to working with you. These studies that I just told you about were really a team effort of a huge number of people over the last 20 years that have worked with our group. They could not have been done without an incredible team. We would also like to acknowledge the National Institutes of Health and the Arthritis Foundation for their financial support of these studies. Thank you for your time. If you have additional questions or would like to learn more about the study, please email us at fmtipstudyteam at gmail.com or visit our website for additional details, www.fmtips.org. Again, we look forward to working with you on this important study.